Tonight, the Ministry of Infrastructure has embarked on a four-day maintenance project along the Shock to VG Highway. But are we putting our best foot forward or are we shooting ourselves in the foot? St. Lucia continues to recognize growth in tourism arrivals in 2019 as the island recorded an all-time high of stayover arrivals. And the government of the member states of the OECS sub-region have embarked on a waste recycling project. All this and more coming up in tonight's broadcast. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovely and Amy Joseph. Good evening. It is Thursday, the 4th of July, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 Nightly News. We're on Flow Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM 105.5 and 105.9 Radio. You can also watch us on our free mobile app. Just search for Caribbean Hot FM in the Play Store. I'm Rochelle Gonzalez, standing in for Lovely St. Amy Joseph. In a previous broadcast of the Hot 7 Nightly News, the public shared their opinion on the relevance of CARICOM. It seems that the heads of government at the 40th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community may have been thinking along the same line in regards to the relevance of their meeting. During the opening presentation, Chairman of the 40th CARICOM Conference, Prime Minister Alan Chastney, discussed the importance of the conference, like the CARICOM Conference not becoming useless meetings. More from Solange Alfred. I am truly honored to serve as the chairman of this 40th conference. The honor belonged to Prime Minister Alan Chastney to chair the 40th meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community. The island's Prime Minister, in his opening speech, walked through a number of matters affecting member states within CARICOM. Prime Minister Chastney also could not help but point out the significance of the hosting of the 40th meeting of CARICOM being held in St. Lucia, not only during the island's carnival season, but also during the island's year-long celebration of 40 years of independence. This occasion is of great significance to us in St. Lucia, as we are currently celebrating the 40th anniversary of our nation's independence, which was marked on the 22nd of February. On behalf of all St. Lucians, I therefore extend a warm welcome to all of you to this, our Helen of the West. For us as a country, this has been a year not just of reflection, but also a year of continuing to chart our path forward, which will enable us to finally take control of our own destiny and to appreciate our strengths. Among these strengths, is being members of the Caribbean community. He would go on to make an impassioned plea to heads of government regarding the relevance of CARICOM, calling on the policymakers of the region to work towards ensuring prosperity of CARICOM member states. I believe that we have lost some of that momentum. We must regain the confidence of the Caribbean people that something meaningful and life-changing is going to come out of our meetings. The most important question we must ask ourselves as leaders, how do we recapture the imagination of our people? How do we truly make CARICOM the driving force for change? Have we done everything within our control to assure the prosperity of our region to the benefit of our citizens? Can we say we are satisfied with our current status? Do we believe that all our citizens or even the majority are satisfied? Are we achieving our full potential? We must reflect on these questions and CARICOM's very own relevance. In addition, Prime Minister Alan Chastney highlighted a loss of competitiveness within the region. He sought to remind the heads of government of the greatness and groundbreaking successes coming from the Caribbean. These difficult times require us to follow in the footsteps of our forefathers and to also take bold, innovative and courageous steps. We must take control of our own destiny and the focus on things that we can control. We must remember and recognize the genius in our region that resulted in the establishment of this same CARICOM, the University of West Indies, 
the Caribbean Development Bank, the creation of the OECS and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And I, may, I remind you that we created these institutions of integration well before the EU and other regions did the same. The chair of the 40th meeting of CARICOM says, in a bid to increase the level of competitiveness and the continued relevance of CARICOM, there must be a maximization of efforts in the creative industries, sports, tourism, are natural we, resources, and the blue economy. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. How can we be? Are we putting our best foot forward or are we shooting ourselves in the foot? The Ministry of Infrastructure has embarked on a four-day maintenance project along the Shock to VG Highway. Officials say this grass maintenance effort will beautify this stretch of roads for not only the hosting of the 40th meeting of heads of government, but also the 2019 Carnival celebration. Ensuring the best side of St. Lucia is highlighted during the busy month of July is top of the agenda for the Ministry of Infrastructure. Routine maintenance engineer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Tibetius Roberts, says with the island moving into carnival season and additionally hosting the 40th meeting of the heads of government of the Caribbean community, the timing seemed opportune to take on a beautification project along the Shock VG Highway. The maintenance along the highway will start on Thursday, 4th July to Sunday, 7th July. We have quite a bit of growth along the highway, overgrowth from trees that are coming. Um, the Carnival Committee has solicited our assistance, asking us to help prune most of the branches for them so that when the bunts are going down, they seem to do that freely in lieu of having obstacles. That is one of the reasons why we're doing it. We also have a very big meeting on island with the Caribbean heads of government and we want to help beautify the place. So things that seem like an obstruction to vehicles, etc., we've taken the initiative into making it look better. So it's like two folds in one. We'll be doing it from nine in the morning when we believe traffic is less. People have gotten to work and we'll get out of there by three. So at that time, although there are vehicles on the road, hopefully we have a lot less traffic than people going in and out of work. Criticism surrounding the weekday maintenance was addressed by Roberts. He says, though unfortunate, the maintenance arm of the Ministry of Infrastructure lacks the resources to function solely on a weekend basis. It's unfortunate because we can't be everywhere over the weekend. In the past few weekends, we've been quite busy working even um, on the Cachos Gilded Highway and elsewhere, doing a number of works from also client verges, potholing areas, and beautifying the island, more so in the north. In uh, in fact, um, in part for the meeting, which is here, the heads of government, um, Caribbean government ministers were here. So we've been quite busy doing these things, and therefore we've got to utilize the time since we do not have very much time, and our people are also actually busy in potholing. Currently, we have sort of a slow period, and we're using the opportunity to do that. Because when our money is in place and we can go full swing again, we may not have the amount of time we need to put towards that. A number of measures looks to be put in place to lessen the inconvenience on motorists during the hours of maintenance along the VG Highway, says Roberts. First off, we've informed the police and we asked them to work in conjunction with us. And they're quite willing to work with us. I have spoken to, I think, one inspector, Neville, who is quite, who's very happy to work with us in whatever way possible. We send them letters, we verbally speak to them about it. We've got the barriers which we've put to take part of the lane. We really, in areas of work, we're taking just one lane of traffic and not a complete lane, just for the areas we work. So as we complete one area, we move to another area and we will do the same. So vehicles will not be, um, they will use both lanes for the greater parts of the roadway in maybe very short, limited areas. Maybe there will be a bit of inconvenience where they will go to one lane and back into the two lanes. The maintenance will include cutting of overhanging trees, branches and overgrowth of grassy areas, as well as removal of obtrusive obstacles along the shock to VG Highway. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. Ongoing efforts to prune and clean the shock and VG roundabouts have sparked a debate questioning the timing of the works, which are predicted to cause major traffic woes for motorists. Adding to the debate is the head of the Grosley Minibus Association and the district rep himself, Stevenson King. 
King said the effort is part of the ministry's work on maintaining the nation's highways and byways, but more so to maintain the environment, and in this case, the shoulders of the road. Considering the fact that we're going into the hurricane season, we have escalated our activities. It's unfortunate that we've, we're doing it during working hours, but we certainly did not just simply wake up one morning and decided to do it. We have um, actually published notices which were placed in, in the media, both print and electronic media, indicating to the public the need to at least be a little patient mm -hmm. in what we are doing. And what we are doing is to keep the environment of the road and of course the actual infrastructure of the road in a pleasant and rideable state of affairs. Meanwhile, the Press Relations Officer of the Gross Lane Minibus Owners Association, Thomas St. Louis said, perhaps a new approach should be adopted when conducting roadworks. I do believe uh, we should adopt the weekend when it comes to walking on that particular highway, or even at night. Uh, for some reason, when in this country I see, you know, persons don't really work at night. Uh, we all know the situation if the Caspers Grizzly Highway on a daily basis, as it is, it's already congested and it's terrible. And to compound that by having wood rocked works done during the day, you understand, it's really an inconvenient. As I speak, there, there are a lot of congestion on the road because they are cleaning the road. I mean, the work have to, to, be, to be done. But uh, why don't uh, the, the Ministry of Infrastructure, you know, think of night work and even on Sundays, you know, where there is less traffic on the road and it will not create that inconvenience to, to the motoring public. Roadworks are scheduled to take place from Thursday, July 4th to Sunday, July 7th between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Following the Ministry of Infrastructure's announcements to prune and clean the Shock and VG roundabouts between Thursday the 4th of July to Sunday the 7th, the Hot 7 team sought to find out how motorists felt about this decision. Is it a traffic causing inconvenience or a welcomed initiative? Here's what the drivers had to say when we asked, is it a well thought out plan to conduct clean up roadworks on weekdays between 9 to 3 p.m.? Basically, it's been years. Every time Carnival is wrong the corner, we have the same problem. And we, the association, have written to the ministry on several occasions, and even the Carnival Committee stating our concerns, but for some reason it falls on deaf ears. What has been happening to the operators, you find when there is Carnival, we have to pass the back road, which again creates some bit of inconvenience to the drivers in terms of the, the gas, the extra mileage they have to do. It's about seven more miles we have to incorporate on our journey. And I want the people to understand, it's not like we're complaining, but it's a reality when, who knows it, feels it. You find you would pick up a person from Grizzly, Bardoage, you take them to Castries, the fare is $1.75, okay? You pick up a person on that same journey, Balata, into Castries, which is maybe less, less than three miles, okay? The face two dollars. So there you see where Grizzly is actually running at a loss. And we have complained about that. Up to this day, we have not heard anything from the ministry. We have not heard anything from the Carnival Committee. And look, there are changes to the route and nobody have consulted us and tell us the way forward, nobody. So what I'm saying is that, I think when it comes to events like that, especially Carnival, I think all the stakeholders to come should come around, you know, and kind of iron out, you know, the the, the, the way forward. Because, I mean, this was a, a, a norm before. You find one carnival, uh, you would always have meetings with Nemo, would have meetings with the carnival committee, the Ministry of Transport, and would come to some form of solution. But this is out the window. So what I'm saying, when it comes to carnival, I want the general public to understand don't blame the operators if we are providing a skeleton service. Folks on the roundabout, it's normally for traffic to flow proper, or properly, as we say. But it's inconvenient right now to work on the roundabout. Why not choose a weekend, or like a Sunday, start from the morning time, or a Saturday afternoon where there's less traffic? And in the meantime, the highway or the falling highway which we talk about, okay, it's really, really causing a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble. 
There have been a lot of blood shed actually on that foreign highway, as we know it, okay? And it caused a lot of uh, accidents. But again, drivers must be very careful when they're driving. They don't have to drive for themselves. They have to drive for other drivers like themselves and take great precaution. But at the same very time, this is not a, a, right, a, high, a foreign highway. It should have been a two-way, up and down. It's enough space for traffic, so it's incurred, an accident incurred at the time. The police should have enough, should have enough space to take care of that accident, all right, where traffic can continue flowing if it was a two-lane highway. All right, that falling highway, they haven't got enough space for that, and it's causing a lot of destruction. And again, I will say, drivers don't take enough care. Everybody wants to take over, and that's the problem we're facing. But on the roundabout, I feel to myself, they should take a weekend, a Sunday or Saturday afternoon, where there's less flow of traffic. Uh, when you look at it, it's always an inconvenience to us as, as bus drivers or even motorists, because um, the times that they choose to, to do projects, um, it's always peak times, um, whereas they can use it. I'm, I'm use weekends or, or Sunday, for example, to complete the projects that they have. We, we find even sometimes when they have to uh, peeve or patch potholes, they do, it, they, they do so during peak times and it causes a lot of traffic, a lot of backlogging traffic, and it kind of inconveniences everybody. In breaking news, a Vuefort man is the island's 21st homicide victim after he succumbed to injuries sustained from being shot with a spare gun in June. Reports coming from the police press office reveal the victim to be Stephen Octav. The 24-year-old was shot in the face on the 13th of June. Police currently have one male suspect in custody in connection with the crime. We will have more on this story in a subsequent broadcast. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News when we come back. St. Lucia now sets a new record and a new recycling pilot is in the works. 